Um, first computer back in, back in, in 59. They got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, took more and more people and so on back. But finally, in, in the 80s, they started to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and we got the whole personal computer revolution. Uh, Neil has talked a lot about personal fabrication. I believe strongly in that. In the same way that in, in the 82, 83, we were building printers. Kentec built the first printers, laser printers for IBM at the same time as John Scully, who's here, was getting the desktop publishing uh, industry off the ground with Adobe and, and the, H and the, the uh, laser jet, the first laser jet printers. We're going to see the same thing happening in 3D. And that is what we need. So about two years ago, my partner Bill Gross at Idealab and I and a bunch of people there decided that we wanted to do the same thing for publishing, for creating objects, rather, that we had been done for publishing, and be able to print things like this, and to print things like this, cogs and wheels and gears and, and motors and, and toys and, and logos and tchotchkes and whatever, uh, to capture the markets. And so I'll show you a little bit of a video here about where we are today. Um, I will leave the volume off, but there's Bill Gross. Uh, that's Idealab, where we incubate lots of different companies like GoTo and Energy Innovations and Solar Energy. Rich DeFeas is uh, here, and these are the early prototypes of the printer. Uh, what we do is we lay down a powder. It's a, a nylon a glass aluminum powder. Uh, we call it a plastic, but it's not really a plastic. Uh, the idea was to do this cheap. Right now, you can go buy rapid prototyping machines. The professionals use the $70,000 ones. Some of them use the $30,000 ones. There's even a, an aggressive company in Israel that's got one down at 15000 But we took cheap light bulbs. We took a different powder. The goal, long run, is to make this machine available for under $1,000. We're not quite there. This, there's the parts uh, here that you see, this, this, this one right here. So we lay it down. We, we push a layer of, of this plastic material on with heat. We then fuse it with pressure. Uh, and we lay each layer down. Each layer is about a hundredth of an inch thick. So it takes a while to build these things. These are, th th these are not hundred page a minute or hundred part per minute printers. These are more like two hour per part printers. Um, right now, the machines which will go out in beta in the beginning of 2007 will cost $5,000 for educational institutions and a little bit more for, uh, for companies. That's what it looks like. Uh, we've got the, the beta units being built today and we hope that this will get to the point where, over the next few years, all sorts of people will, let's see if I get this right here, uh, will be building parts. So what we're doing is partnering with some of these people to let your kids who can design things like these cosmic blobs. These are 3D shapes that kids can design on, online. You ought to take a look at this kind of stuff. Google, of course, with SketchUp now makes 3D design very easy. Uh, we want people, kids to be able to design a, a part for their dollhouse or for, or for their X-Men or for a, a transformer and print it out overnight and then paint it and then make it. So the whole joy of making physical objects. And for businesses, engineering, if you want to make models uh, that don't have to be super precise because we're only going to get it right now at the initial phases, sort of a hundred, hundred dots or a hundred of an inch tolerance. Uh, later on, we hope to get more. Uh, Make molds and, and make as many parts as you like. This will be out. You can go to desktopfactory.com and, and take a look at it and, and talk to us if you want. We've got about 100 companies and schools that have already ordered them, and uh, we're very excited about it. And you guys are the first to see parts produced by Desktop Factory. Thank you.